Good morning and welcome to The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kanama news and culture are shared over the warmth of coffee and stories. Guys, we talk stories here as well. Today, we're actually talking about a really special story, a story that I feel like a lot of us have really learned and come to enjoy and feel as though we are a part of if you've been following this person. Today, we are bringing to The Review Carly Chuck. Carlson, who has taken the Kendama world by storm through her unique editing style by bringing the human elements of Kendama, the community elements, and integrating it into Kendama edits. If you guys haven't been following Carly Carlson or Chuck, as most people know her, I go and hit that follow button on her. Go and enjoy the content that she is bringing to us. There is a level of warmth that is unparalleled through her content. So I'm excited to get her on here to talk through some of her story because her story is just such a warm story. It's a story of her coming out of her shell and into the big cup, you know, into the Kanama community, the warmth that is here and finding that, that home, that place where she can feel like she belongs. And I think that a lot of us have resonated with that kind of a story. Uh, but Carly has really done a great work of putting that forward. You know, Chuck has put a lot of emphasis and work into portraying that side of the Kanama journey that she's been on. And so today we're going to be diving into that and we're going to be answering the question or asking the question, you know, how do we as individuals take steps in our lives to become more integrated in this community? How do we experience the same sort of heartwarming love in this community that Chuck has? And how can we start to e extend that from ourselves into the people around us and foster those moments and those communities around us? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Excited to bring Chuck on here and dive in. But before we do, a couple things. One thing, A, as always, I wanna know what are you drinking this morning? You know, as always, I got a nice cup of coffee, but hey, you know what, we did it different this time. Throw a little curveball your way. Normally we do an AeroPress, but I have been living with one of my best friends, Jason, and we got an espresso machine. He has one. And so I've been doing a lot of espresso-based beverages recently. And so today I uh, made a little Americano with the espresso machine. So pull the shot there. I, I really got to do a tutorial sometime, so that should be coming soon. But on top of that, uh, a couple other announcements. And as I, as I see you guys rolling in in the chat, let me know what you're drinking this morning. We'll get to that. Uh, let me say a couple things. There's a cool uh, couple of drops coming out this week or have just come out in this past week that I just want to shout out real quick. Not always do we always hit the news of what's going on in the Kanama community, but I think today's a good day to do it. There's a lot of fun going on. So first off, let me say a couple new drops from a couple big brands. We got the Sweets Kanamas drop that happened on Friday of their newest addition to their Splice series. Now I missed out on the first one. I'm probably going to miss out on this one too, but I'm maybe going to scoop this one if they're still available somewhere. Uh, they're a unique exploration of using different wood types in their kendamas to really focus on how does wood play into effect in how we play kendamas. So go check out the Sweet Kendama Splice. Uh, secondly, uh, I think actually our friends over at Grand Theory are live right now. Jake Weens is live talking about the GTEBH, the new Ben Harold mod that was kind of in a commemoration to one of the most infamous Kanama edits that's ever come out called Fringe Case. If you haven't watched Fringe Case, what are you even doing? Like, if you haven't seen Fringe Case, are you even a Kanama player? That's the question, right? So go check that one out. I think he's still live talking about it. If he's not, uh, go peep the follow-up live or go shoot them some messages. Go cop it. I think it's like 45 bucks. That's super cheap for Ben Harold Chip. Anyways, thirdly, Soul is doing a drop this weekend and it is unknown. We don't know what it is. So I want to know down in the chat what you guys think it is as well. Uh, as well, let me say uh, another record was broken this past week. Tiblex and uh, Takia have been going head to head on the tap record. I've seen that uh, Takia was, I think, the first one to hit 30 and Tiblex just broke 32. When does this race end and when is Madi getting in on this? That's the question I want to know. So guys, that's a little bit of the news of this past week. Some exciting stuff is happening in the Kanama community. We're coming out of the slumps of January and February into the new year. Let me see who is all here in the chat. Give a couple shout outs and then we are getting Carly on here and diving into this week's episode of the review. I see Prospera above has got his coffee and Dama. Welcome here. Uh, Arthur with the Kinemistics Evolution Inspiration Spreaded. Absolutely, Arthur. We always appreciate you here. Spectra Ken guessing the Sulab and Soul collab and Dano copying that natty of the Sweet Splice. 
So welcome here, guys. Let's get Carly on here and let's dive into this week's episode of The Brew V. Always, if you guys have any questions, uh, we want them. We want to answer your questions live because this is a live podcast. And all you got to do is drop those questions in the little Q&A tool at the bottom and we will do our best to answer them at a few different points in today's episode. But without further ado, Carly, hey, what's up? Doing? Welcome here to the review. Thank it you. seems like my headphones aren't actually connecting. And so let me just see if I can actually plug these back in. Who is that now? Can I hear you? Yes. Perfect. Woo. I can hear you now in my ears and not through my phone. It's great. There we Curly, go. Hey. Or Chuck, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, I'm, we are stoked to have you here. Oh my goodness. This is Thank always a pleasure you. and honor for me. I, I have the best job in the world. I just get to have conversations over coffee with people and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you drinking this morning? Um, I'm sipping on some bullet, bulletproof coffee. Shit on the coffee pot. Okay, did you put the butter in it? No, no butter, no butter today. <laughs> no butter today? Are you, have yeah. you done the bulletproof diet? Like, so, okay, the little, little nerdy. I'm actually very familiar with Dave Asprey and like the biohacking space, bulletproof coffee, all that stuff. Super, super invested in like that area of the world. So this is super fascinating to me for a quick second. Yeah. But um, no, <laughs> I, I just like <laughs> I'm just a big fan of the coffee. It's, you know, super highly caffeinated, which is top priority when it comes to. Oh, <laughs> my bad. That's all good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Caffeine top priority. Bulletproof. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I haven't actually tried it yet, um, but I've, I've definitely, I've had chats with some of his team before and we've talked a little bit about it and the Bulletproof Coffee, if you guys don't know what Bulletproof Coffee is, it's supposed to be like really toxin free coffee. It's supposed to be like basically like really optimal, highly caffeinated. It, the Bulletproof Coffee, I can't remember, it, does, it doesn't have mushrooms in it like Lion's Mane or anything like that and it does it. They have a, I think they have one that does. Yeah. I don't think like the regular blend. Yeah. Does. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so either, but it's supposed to basically like be the optimal coffee you're supposed to drink to live longer because Dave Asprey, the guy who invented it, he's this like big nutty biohacking guy who's got all these like nerdy approaches to life and trying to prolong his life by, you know, using different tools that optimize his life naturally. His like his big ultimate goal in life is to live to be like 180 years old, which I think is kind of crazy and ridiculous, but Hey, uh -huh. Who knows? We don't know until it happens. So, right. <laughs> right, and so, so you are a coffee drinker, though. Yes. Well, yeah. welcome here. We're always a big Thank fan you. of anyone who drinks coffee on the show. Um, secondly, I always want to know before we get too deep into the review, I like to ask a couple of warm up questions if you're familiar with the show. Uh, one of the questions that was a new question added in this season of the, the podcast uh, by one of the guests, or not one of the guests, sorry, uh, a fan of the show asked this question once. I was like, this is the greatest question ever. Uh, if you could teach any one person their first bike, either past or present, who would you want to teach? Oh, that is a good question. I would want to teach... Okay, so my favorite music hip hop artist of all time his name is West Side Gun <laughs> I would love to see him play with the kendama that would yeah. be so sick right <laughs> to see your idol like playing with it yeah uh, we yeah. see down in the chat someone showed up Nikolai Tesla we've gotten so many cool names throughout the the history of season two of the show of just yeah. different people that they want to teach you know I like I think I change my answer almost every week when I like think about it myself but right. this week I'm gonna say for me Ben Harold. How cool would it be to be the person who taught oh. Ben Harold his first spike? That you you were the one who taught the guy who changed the game, you know? I think yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So a third question I want to know, and then we'll, we'll really dive in. And, and I think what we'll do here today, uh, Chuck, is kind of journey through your story. I, I think, well, and here's a weird piece, is like you've actually done such a good job of this already, which is one of the things I was touching on at the beginning of the episode is that you have such a unique style of portraying your Kendama journey that is so di different from everybody else, which has allowed you to like really stand out in the space. Um, but what I loved about it and what I do really love about the way that you portray yourself through your Instagram and through your socials is that it's not just about the tricks that you're doing. You're showcasing like life. You're showcasing the people that are around you. You're showcasing literally the progression of you entering into the community, you exploring this game, you exploring the community and just going into it. And, and I want to dive into that. 
right? Your emphasis on not just showing like, oh yeah, I landed this new trick today. This is super cool. But showing the like, hey, these are the people that are around me and we're in this together. And I think that's so cool. So what I want to know before we dive into that story, okay. lastly, is who's the most inspiring person to you today in Kendama? In Kendama? Like different people inspire me for different reasons, you know? So like mm -hmm. George Marshall, I've looked up to since the beginning because I love editing videos and I everything he does is mind blowing and it's He's so good. Yeah, it's something I look up to like someday I'll be able to do you know a tiny bit of what he does. <laughs> Obviously Matt Sweets is a really big inspiration for me just because of everything he did, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, I think he's a big inspiration for a lot of us. Yeah. And then Joe Nelson, I look up to him like I he's super inspirational to me. Like just his whole style and his vibe. I always am every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, I gotta go make a video. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Joe is amazing too. He's a really yeah. good Kendama player. I didn't really get to know Joe all that much until the past year and, and it, a little off and on, but I remember Joe was like that kid. When I first met Joe, it was at MKO, I think 2018, we were in the hotel and it was like out front in the lobby, we're on the pavement and you know, everybody's smoking out there, but it's like late in the, the evening and, and Joe's out there challenging as many people to games of can as possible, right? He's just grinding away, just like throwing down the, the glove, throwing down the mallet. He's ready to just take on anybody. And, and like back then he was really good, but you could just see right there how persistent he was at trying to get good at this game. And he would just like wage the war on anyone he possibly could. And he loved it. And it was so fun to play against him because he would get so hyped for you. Like it was like, he was insanely good, but he was more stoked to see you hit something crazy. And I always loved that. And I love that about most Kendama players. It's like, most people are like that. Having your hype squad around you. Joe's like a hype squad for so many people. He's oh, great. That's awesome. Okay, so um, Carly, let me say a couple things here and then let's dive in uh, to, to your story here. Uh, let me remind the people in the chat, this is a live conversation. You guys can ask questions live by just dropping them down in the Q&A tool. If you are a Patreon, there's always an opportunity for you guys to ask your questions with priority at, you know, through the Patreon or through my close friend story if you sign up there. And then also just drop them on the, the post, drop your questions there. It's great for the Instagram algorithm and it allows me to plan ahead for the episode. So uh, make sure you guys put those in there. But if you're here today joining us, drop them in that Q&A tool and we will ask your questions in today's episode. So Carly, here, here's where what I wanna know. First off, do you, you, you obviously go by Chuck fairly often. Do you prefer Chuck? And where did that nickname come from? I think <laughs> I, I just need to know first off. Um, I, I feel like I do prefer Chuck, yeah. but... Um... You know, lots of people call me Carly. <laughs> sure, sure. So um, where did it come from? So pretty much just my entire life since I was really young, my family called me Chuck. Uh, yeah, I just, <laughs> okay, the, the real thing, like, so we had a dog and my brother would like, you know how you like do, you make a voice for your animals? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, kind, kind oh, of yeah. Talk Everybody's got their baby voice or their yeah. dog voice. And then you got yeah. a cat voice and your cat voice is never like a sweet voice. It's like freaking cat. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh my when <laughs> my when my brother would talk like for my dog, he that's like where Chuck started. He would say Chuck. And yeah. And then from there on it just like really stuck. And it's just been that way for, for most it's of your just, life. And, and now you're just, now you're Chuck. Like, yeah. you, you are Chuck. Car Carly's, you're Chuck. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so so Chuck, here here's what I want to know. Uh, you started playing Kendama not that long ago. You've been in it now for what, a, two years? Longer than two years. Okay, how long, how long has it been now? Uh, not three years, Okay, so longer in, than in, two. In between the two to three year range, you've been at it for yeah. a little while now. And I want to know, you know, how, first off, like, we'll we'll get to the story of how you got introduced into Kendama, but uh, where are you from, you know, and what were you doing before Kendama? So I'm from Rapid City, South Dakota. Oh, nice. And, yeah. And I live, I live in Denver now, though. Um, Before I was playing Kendama, when I lived in South Dakota, I grew up a dancer. So 
dance was my life in South Dakota. Oh, cool. Yeah. What, um, what kind of dance? So, like, hip hop was definitely my thing. But I was in ballet and tap and jazz. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like most people like that grow up doing dance kind of do them all, right? You never just do one. Yeah. yeah, like to be in at my studio, to be in like the competition side of things, you had to do them all. So I did them all because I like competing. That's very And then. Yeah, did you have one that you preferred? Hip hop, for sure. I, I taught hip hop classes. Is that is that what you meant? Yeah, like, was there one of the, the different branches of dance that you, you really enjoyed? And hip-hop. Yes. yes, yes. And nice. then... Cool. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so you, you were doing dance uh, before Kanama. What else were you doing? What was life like? So I was also a big DJ... Not a big DJ. So I started DJing, like, wedding receptions when I was 15. And then... I just, like, DJing was a really big part of my life from, like, 15 to, like, 20. So I was, like, touring with Afro Man and, like, Paul Wall and T-Pain. And then that's why I moved out to Denver is for... You were touring with T-Pain? Yeah. <laughs> so I did a couple shows with T-Pain. I was mostly Afro Man's... That's so DJ. cool. <laughs> yeah that's wild oh my gosh so you you okay you did a couple you toured with t-pain like who gets to say a that in the Kanama community that they went on tour with t-pain <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's awesome so you how did you get into that you were just djing wedding receptions at 15 yeah how did that start um i pretty much just applied for the job like i loved music i feel like i went to like one of my aunt's weddings when I was young and, you know, just looked at the DJ and was like, I want to do that. And what, so I, what, oh, man. Well, okay, what, what was so enticing about that to you? So you, you liked music. What, what kind of led you to that part of your life? Because obviously, like, if, if people haven't been following you and, or if they have been, they would know that, like, Chuck is both music and Kendama community. It's like, it's this mashup of all these loves that have come together into to who you are. Uh, so we, we really want to know this music side and then we'll, we'll jump into the Kendama. But how, yeah, how did, how did that, like, wow, I just need to know. This is crazy. So with the weddings, I literally just applied. I just really wanted to do it. And I got the job, which I was super underqualified. But then from there, I started throwing shows in Rapid City and, like, started learning how to actually, like, mix, not just wedding music. And then, like, Afro Man happened to be doing a show in Rapid City, and I got hooked up with his manager, and then, yeah, just started going from there. And then when I moved to Denver... I got really lucky and got to DJ at a lot of places like right away when I moved here, which was amazing. That's super cool. And so you got into like the circuit of, of DJing. So th that's obviously a pretty important part of your life. Do you still do that right now? Or does that look totally different throughout COVID? I DJ like in my room, just like jam out like flow state every single day. But like, I don't, shows aren't super like priority like they don't excite me as much as they used to so mm. you know covid there's you know i haven't done a show in you know more than a year do you, do you mostly mix or do you create your own music like from so, from scratch like your own beats your own i produce a little bit but i i like i'll make so I produce like lo-fi and like hip hop beats and stuff like that. And then I'll like, and then I'll create like some weird mashups and stuff to DJ. But when I'm DJing, it's usually not my music. Oh, that's fair. If you, you okay, so lo-fi first off is like my favorite music of all time. I yeah. love lo-fi. That is pretty much what is playing in my headphones eight hours a day while I'm working. It's like, it just keeps me in that state of movement and flow without interrupting me. Lo-fi is so good at that. 
So do you do you have a do you have a SoundCloud of lo-fi that you want to plug that I can I can listen to later? I'm looking for some new lo-fi. <laughs> oh man, I don't even want. Okay, so I do have a SoundCloud, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't yes! post. Lo- <laughs> I don't post. Uh, there's very okay it, it's dj so my dj name is dj fuete f-o-u-e-t-t-e and that's uh, also a dance move nice yeah that's where that came from oh okay what is that dance move um so it's and what is on a scale of one to ten what how hard is it for me to do it <laughs> i think you should try it it's it's a <laughs> solid ten it's a hard move <laughs> It's a spin, yeah, and it means okay. it means to whip yeah, or to spin. To whip or to spin. So, like, it, is it a jump and spin? <laughs> no, it's just a spin where you can continuously, the way your leg goes, you can continuously spin like forever. Oh, it, it's that thing like where they're on like one t- one foot and they're like using their other leg to like propel their momentum around and around and around. Yes. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's something that I'm not keen on trying. <laughs> that, that sounds terribly painful for my feet. It's I don't hard. think I could do that. That's crazy. Oh, man, that's like what you see in all the movies, and you're like, I wish I could do that. Yes, I is wish it, I could do it. <laughs> oh, so I was going to ask if you could from your years of dance training. Is it is it actually like a, a peak trick to be able to do, like the, the triple axle of, of ballet or dance? Um, Kind of. Like, I, yeah, I think it's the hardest spin. So, yeah okay okay i'm gonna start working on it i'll post my attempts <laughs> on my story afterwards so if you guys want to see me attempt, i'm just kidding okay yes so you were doing dance you were doing some djing and and that was what your life kind of looked like before kendama now i can i can begin to see where some of the worlds would overlap where kendama might have been introduced in but why don't you walk us through how kendama entered into your life in that season and and yeah what what exactly was life like when that happened for you yeah, so I moved to Denver, and I didn't know anyone besides uh, my brother had a friend that lives out here, <clears throat> and um, so I moved out to Denver. I didn't know anyone, and I had, so my brother had been playing Kendama for years and years and years, and I... Uh, I pretty much just ordered one on Amazon one day. <laughs> Taboo. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I had nothing to do here in Denver. And I was just like, yeah, this is something I need to do. <laughs> right on. So you, you bought your first Kendama on Amazon. So influenced by your brother. So it wasn't by yes. a community. It wasn't that you were at a, a show or anything like that. And it wasn't through the, the typical influence, because what I see now today is so many people that have come from the influence of EDM or the influence of, of dance or music are often being introduced by the works of Sweet Skandamas and their mob via like uh, Dirt Monkey, you know, uh, Subtronics, uh, Boogie T, all these guys, because they've like, they've, they've embedded the influence of Kendama into the EDM world. But that wasn't for you. That, that isn't how you got into it. I didn't know there was a Kendama community. Really? I didn't know that, like, first off, I had no idea that, like, groups of people in my town would get together and play this toy. Like, that changed my life. But, like, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know there was a whole big group of people that played Kendama. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just thought my it was a weird thing that my brother did. And I thought, like, oh, this will keep me sane while I'm here in Denver. <laughs> Yeah, so you didn't know there was a community. Was your brother involved? Like, does your brother have an Instagram account that you can plug that we can all go show some love on afterwards? So maybe Sunday is my brother. Oh, for real? I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, what's your brother's first name? Uh, His name is Chase. Chase. Oh, my, he runs maybe Sunday. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh. that's my brother. So, can we, so then you didn't know there was a community involved, but your brother ran a clothing <laughs> company that was connected to the Kendama community? So I got my first Kendama before maybe Sunday started. Oh, okay. <laughs> and before, like, so he graduated from college and was, like, started making these designs. And when he, like, at the very first steps, he, you know, he was, like, get a Kendama, like, you need to be part of this. And then I did. 
And then maybe Sunday happened. Mm. And then I saw the wonderful world of the community. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, so when, when we were talking before the episode, we, we were talking through some titles and some concepts that we wanted to talk through. And, and one of them being this idea of that you, you really came out of your shell into the Kendama community. So maybe before we dive into what that process looked like, talk to me through who, you know, where you were at personally before Kanama because you know the way that we talked about it beforehand was that you were you were kind of in a shell you were you know not maybe as as involved in the community talk to me what that was actually like for you so I've always been an introvert and like when I I had like when I moved here I just didn't have any friends which was fine you know I was like I'll make some like I just I've always been pretty quiet you know never had like a community you know Mm -hmm. and yeah so uh, yeah I was just lonely here in Denver no friends just stayed in my room all the time (laughs) yeah so that seems so strange to me a little bit because you were DJing at like weddings and stuff and I just can't imagine that someone who's DJing at these big events or running these things and it's like behind the, you know, the, the table or the disc, just like hyping people up, watching this thing happen. But then also at the same time, like, oh no, it actually kind of makes sense that you could be introverted while doing that. Cause you're setting the stage for everybody else's social and yeah. you're, you're just creating the space for that. But did you ever find that stressful for you? Like being in those rooms, having so many people coming up to you, yada, yada. So yeah, lots of people question that. They're like, how can you be shy and a DJ? But like, First off, it's something I'm so passionate about, you know. Mm. And then also, like, when I give myself a title, like, it makes me, I don't know, I'm, like, my least shy when I'm on stage, like, whether it's dancing or DJing. Like, Mm. for some reason, when I'm on stage, I'm, like, most myself, like, less, you know, I'm least quiet. (laughs) Interesting. Do you feel like you're... I don't, I don't know how to ask this, but like, do you feel like you're like a more real version of yourself when you're performing or you're doing that where it just feels more authentic to you that you're just getting to express something inside that doesn't necessarily need to use your words. You just get to yeah. express it. Yes. You said that perfectly. That's exactly. Yeah. It. Oh, I totally can. I can, I can resonate with that. And I think a lot of people would resonate with that too. It's, I'm not super introverted. If people know me, I'm pretty extroverted. <laughs> And I, I don't have a problem talking. If anything, I actually have the opposite problem in performing something that that actually gives me anxiety more than anything is that I'm really fine, you know, just talking to people, engaging, but then to like add some sort of element of performance to that is then a, that's like vulnerability to me. It's like, what if I don't do good? I, you know, and, and it just reflects poorly on me. And that, that's the fear that I have, which is the total opposite. Whereas you're finding freedom in that. I find that to be captivating. Yeah, that's it that's a weird concept that we could be complete opposite in yeah. that, you know? <laughs> totally. So, okay. Super cool. So you moved to, you moved to Colorado. You had come out of this life where you were performing, doing these shows. You started finding a couple opportunities in Colorado and then you're like, okay, not, not really finding a community to be involved in brothers, brothers, uh, Kanama player. He's been involved and he's like, yo, you should go buy one. You scoop one on Amazon. What, what do you remember? What Kanama you bought on Amazon? Do you still have it? Yes. Do you want to see it real quick? Yeah, I do. It's a, uh, it's this Kaizen, Kendama USA half split Kaizen. Yeah. Oh, the Kaizens are so cool. That was one of my first Kendamas as well. Yeah. It's for, for like an Amazon pick. Yeah. (laughs) It's a great Kendama. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And you probably paid a hefty premium for it on Amazon too, (laughs) because guys, if you're listening to this and you're new to the Kendama community and you're like, oh, where do I buy Kendamas? Head to actual Kendama websites. Go to sweetskendamas.com, buy a Kendama there. Don't buy it on Amazon because it's usually marked up and there's a premium and you can actually get good customer service from the brands. Just go go reach out to them. They're friendly. My brother was so, he was like, Chuck, what? I like he knows everything about Kendama, you know, like we all we all know about, you know, what types. Mm-hmm. He was like, but you only learn that after you've made the mistakes. <laughs> right. Exactly. That, I, I bought my first Kendama from Caleb Kendama when they were going out of business. So that was like that was my very first Kendama. I don't even remember what it, I gave it away to someone. I don't even know where it is. I, mean, I kind of regret it now because I didn't ever picture myself 
being this invested into Kanama years later. I like bought it. I played with it. I bought a new one. I was like, ah, yeah, I can give this one away. But now I can't, I don't even know who I gave it to, but I regret it because I'm like, ah, that was my first Kanama. That could be, that could be behind me on the wall for the review. Yep. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. So you bought the Kanama. Now talk to me a little bit about what that early progression looked like. You started playing in your room. How did, how did it go from playing by yourself and maybe your brother to, to getting involved to the point that now you are like synonymous with Kendama community. Like those two words are, are really easily tied together. Yeah. Um, so I immediately started making edits and like, <laughs> like day two I was filming and like, I was making edits as kind of like music videos for the music that I was producing. And I just started posting them, posting them. And soon enough, um, you know, someone uh, reposted it, you know, and then I got got a message. So, OK, so I I played for like a while, like maybe a year until I received my first message from someone in Denver that was like, hey, there's a group of people in Denver that play Kendama. You should come to this jam. And that blew my mind. And I went. And so, like, when I was playing Kendama, like, for that year, I was, you know, very, very in, like, an isolated state. Mm -hmm. Still no friends. And when I went to this jam, I remember, like, well, I got in my car and I just started crying. And I, like, called my mom. I was like, like, I met this amazing group of people. And, like, it was the first time that, like, I felt, like, super just, like, myself. And everyone was laughing and playing Kendama. And, like, that was such a pivotal point in my life. And from that mm. point on. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, from that point on, it's okay. been a, a pretty crazy journey for you. I, yeah. this morning, just, be, wow. So, so this morning, right before the episode, I was like, okay, I need a refresher of one of my favorite videos that I think I've seen posted in the past year. Uh, I think I wrote down the title here just so I, I didn't forget it. But you, you did, a, maybe I didn't write it down. Where, where did I put it? I had it on my notes somewhere, but you did an edit called something like The World Doesn't Stop Turning or, or something like that. And where it was yeah. detailing your Kendama journey from the start to, to kind of where you are and really an emotional journey of how you got invested in. And you talked through that first story of when you just got in your car and you started crying. And it was like, I found people. And yes. it's so cool. And, and I think that's like a beautiful story, first off, because you played in isolation for like a year, not knowing anyone. Did you feel like you were connected at all to the Kendama community through your Instagram or through socials? Or still, like, like, not not at all? Still not at all. Still didn't really realize. Like, I I was, like, slowly starting to, like, follow, like, the big companies and, like, started to realize. But it wasn't until I went to a Kendama jam that I really realized, like, oh, like, this group of people, like, supports you. Like, people that don't know you will support you. And, like, mm. yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, who were some of the people that you met at this jam? Who who are some of the early influences in your life in that uh, in that world? I love to to take some space to always shout out some of these people because I think there's often these unnamed individuals in our in our lives that are really the people that built us up into who we are, and you know now we get to have these conversations. But there's these like foundational building blocks that that helped get us there, right? So yeah. Who who were some of those people for you? I mean, it's so crazy because like. So the guys whose apartment complex that the first jam was, I mean, flash forward, his name is Kendama Cody. Like, I live in his house now. <laughs> like, like I'm his roommate now. Like, he's my absolute best friend. Like, so obviously yeah. Kendama Cody. The guy that I rode up in the elevator with on my first Kendama jam, he also lives in this house. And, like, he's my boyfriend. Like... Yeah. This entire group, like everyone that I met at that Kendama jam, just like have became my absolute best friends. So shout out Kendama Cody, 
Shout out, Brayden. <laughs> Shout out to all the people everywhere that have taken their time to invite us into the community of Kendama and have brought us to the places that we are today. I, I mean, I have individuals in my life when I, early, when I was early in my Kendama play that were the people that really pushed me, right? I don't think, I'm very people dependent. Like, if <laughs> my biggest fear is doing, doing like a Kendama in isolation or being by myself for too long. I would go crazy. I like depend on people contact. And if it wasn't for those people, I don't even know if I'd still be playing Kendama. I genuinely don't think I would be this connected to Kendama if it wasn't for those types of people in my life. Yeah. Did you ever feel that that might have been the case? Like you would have just eventually let go of Kendama if not for those people? Um, I think the my Kendama, Kendama journey would be way different. I think I'd still be jamming in my room. I love it. Yeah. But obviously, like, I think I would have kept playing. But obviously, the people make okay. it a hundred times better. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a lot more resilient than I. I think I would have given up <laughs> a long time ago. I was so like, when I, when I first started playing, so I, I worked as like a resident assistant in a private high school dorm. And so we used to like do these dumb challenges with the Kendama uh, where we'd like make bets. It, we lived in Canada, right? So I think I've maybe told this story in the past on the show, but one of my earliest memories and fondest memories of Kendama was making bets with the, these like dorm kids that we had where, you know, if I landed a trick within three tries, like a trick that I was really working on, then they would have to, you know, it's Canada, it's cold. They'd have to do a lap around our building in their bare feet in the cold in winter. And it was like, we'd make these dumb wagers all the time. Or like, and if I missed, I'd had to go and do it. Or we'd do all these ridiculous things. And, and that was like my fondest, earliest memories. And that pushed me to progress. Cause like, I gotta get better at these tricks so I don't lose these bets. And, and that's how yeah. I started. Even though they weren't Kanama players, I had to like find people that would at least engage in the act of Kendama with me in some capacity that would push me. And so I like forced other people into these bets. And that's how I got into Kendama early on. <laughs> but yeah. so, okay, so that that's so cool, uh, Chuck. And I, I love watching through your edits of, of your progression through community because you've documented it almost like a vlog-esque style. And so I wanted to dive into that. Yeah. Like why, why make edits like that what inspired you to do that and and why not just fall into the conventional like oh look at this cool trick i landed post it instead you're telling stories yeah um it's always like making videos has always been like a bigger part of kendama than like grinding out tricks like i think grinding out a video like really working on like the vibe of a video is it, that's always been important to me and also like I just want to you know portray that like y y like that, that you can I don't know it does you know Kendama doesn't have to be about the tricks it can be about the community and you know it can be about creativity and other things besides the tricks and I think that's what I yeah so I make videos like that <laughs> Preach it. That, that, that's yeah. what it is, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been saying this pretty much since the beginning of this, this show starting. That Kendama is more than just a ball in a cup, right? It, I, I get really tired of like the, I, I love it. Don't, so let me, let me say this in like a twofold of like an exaggerated, like tiresome. But I, I love the more human aspect of Kendama. I care more about the people that are behind the tricks. I care more about the stories. That's part of why we created the show in the first place was to tell behind the Ken stories of your favorite players, influencers, brand owners, all that stuff. Cause I think that's the stuff that actually keeps us in the game longer than just learning how to do an extra tap in a trick, you know, or learning how to, you know, do a whatever. I don't, I don't even know what the new tricks are on the block that everybody's trying right now. Cloud, whatever. No, cloud bounces were months ago. But like, <laughs> I, I care way more about inviting people into a deeper narrative, a deeper story. And I think that you are doing that through your socials. And it sounds like that's actually what's, you know, driven you more than the trick progression and more than anything else. And that's really led you down the path that you've been on. And I think that's really cool to see. So, okay, okay. Um, let, let's take a couple of minutes here. Uh, let's answer a couple of questions from the chat. And then I think what we'll do is we'll dive into more of the modern story because 
you now have two coveted sponsorships on two remarkable brands. Uh, we got Sweet Skin Amas with their sponsorship there. I definitely want to hear that story. And then on top of that, you're also sponsored by your brother's company, Maybe Sunday, which is super cool. I still need to cop some clothing. Carter Justice yeah. said he was going to send me something once upon a time. I'm going to follow up on that guy. <laughs> follow up. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got a couple. Yeah, I'm going to. Carter, coming for you. Uh, we got a question here on the post from Kim Lindstrom. Uh, wants to know, I like this question a lot. This one's a fun one. He says, uh, you're stranded on an island. Name three things and three people you would take with you. Also, thumbs up for Carly Carlson or Chuck. Uh, really like the vibes on your clips. Your vids always put out love. So some, some love from Kim Lindstrom. Okay, but three things. Three things, three people <laughs> stranded on an island. All right. Three people first. My mom, my dad, my brother. No question. Absolutely bringing them. And three things. I feel like I should say Kendama. <laughs> I feel like you're allowed I, not to, but <laughs> but I, I feel, feel like, like I feel like the chat here might might blow up on you if you don't. I think Kendama can be used as lots of tools. All right, Kendama, my water bottle, <laughs> and hmm. and and like. A knife. Ooh, okay. You could you could just sharpen your kendama into like a knife. That could work. Like a little wooden one. You might kendama yeah. is quite versatile, you know? Like kendama could be firewood. You could do a lot of different things with kendama. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots yep. of potential there. So a kendama, water bottle, knife, that sounds like a pretty good combination. I don't even know what I'd bring. I would just give up. If I was stranded on an island, I'd just say I'm done. <laughs> I I don't think I'd I don't think I'd they last very long. Okay, we got, a, we got a question here from Jacob D. Watts. Uh, Jacob from Analog, he wants to know, what's your favorite Kanama trick? Um, anything with slingers. Sling, a slinger is the, gunslinger's the first trick I ever learned, pretty much. And I've just been going hard on slingers ever since. Slinger trick. Really, what, what was it about... What was it about slingers that was so attractive to you that you wanted to pursue those? Because that's not super common. Not, not that everybody does slingers. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know why I started. <laughs> I don't know why I learned it. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but I don't know. <laughs> I just like it them. That's fair. Hey, slingers are dope. Yeah. I love slingers. Slingers are one of my favorite tricks. I'm I'm always disappointed. Not not disappointed. I, I love every kendama that I ever get. I'm really not a picky kendama person. I just like take whatever I get and play with it. But I'm always happy when I have one that slings really good. Because yeah. you know, there's a there's a pretty significant difference between a kendama that slings and a kendama that doesn't. It's like if you have a good kendama that slings, you can you can get a lot of them in there. But yes. man, those ones feel nice. Also, sweets kendamas in the chat. I said kendama could be firewood. You know I don't mean that, but let me just say real quick. Your owner, Matt Sweets, went on his story not that long ago with a couple of plus-size kendamas, and he threw them in a fire pit and used them for firewood. So, just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, <laughs> unblock me. We love you guys over here. Uh, okay, Chuck, uh, another question here. We got a couple more coming in. We got one from Steezy Wonder. Uh, this isn't really a question. Uh, he says, and every video you make has a feel that's so sick. I, mean, he's, I think he means it's so rad and, and loves it. So here's what I want to know uh, to kind of follow up on this question here from Steezy Wonder uh, is what do you think of when you're creating your videos? Because I think a lot of us, uh, for me, I'm like, I love the content that you're creating, but I have a hard time like finding a narrative or putting it together. How do you film your videos? Do you just film stuff and then take clips and throw it together and just capture the different moments? Well, how do you do it? So I usually come up with some type of concept. Like, so, like, I like every video to have some type of like underlying concept or I'll hear a song and be like, I want to make a music video for this song pretty much. And just kind of like visualize exactly how I'll just listen to the song over and over and over and just kind of, map out how I want the video to mm -hmm. go or create a small concept 
for the video, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and you post most of your videos via IGTV. That, you do a lot of your content through IGTV, which very few people actually do. Most people are like, we need the quick tricks, the, the like fast paced edits and, and your edits. Like, I think I watched one of them uh, this morning as well, because I was trying to, you know, catch up on the content, make sure I'm, I'm well equipped for, for this morning's interview. Uh, and I think one of them, I was like, the amount of kendama that I saw in it was like maybe only 20% and the rest was just like capturing <laughs> these moments. The funniest scene ever too was like, you like, I think you, you did the like, I don't even know what the like TikTok dance is and you're like, I look like a hot dog or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed so hard. It's like, th those are the moments that I think are so fun to incorporate in. And it's like, those yeah. are the things that actually keep me watching more than just doing the tricks. And it's like, oh, and then you throw in kendama and then another kendama piece. And do you plan to do that or do you, yeah, like, how do you create those moments? Um, well, the video that you're talking about is my watermelon pie edit. Yeah. And that's probably my favorite edit of all time that I've made of it, you know. <laughs> um, how do I create those? Well, for I, I film a lot, like when it's time to film, like, I'm just constantly going and then I don't take out those outtakes I think those outtakes yeah are like like what you said it makes it funny and like more real and like people want to see that like they've seen me do slingers but it's funny when mm -hmm. like I fall or hit my head or something <laughs> that, that's the, that's the fun stuff right yeah my my one roommate keeps telling me I need to do a full edit of where I keep hitting myself in the face or like slamming my fingers with my kendama doing a trick and he's like people want to see that I was like I don't think they want to see it and he's like no they'll want to see it it's like yes. I don't want to show them that <laughs> yes <laughs> people want to see that <laughs> yeah I, I should pull all those clips I hit my fingers so bad a couple weeks ago when I was doing some juggle trick the string tension and both the tama and the ken came down on top of my fingers are like sandwiched and I just like ran into my kitchen. I was like, ah, it's so bad. It's like, I posted that on my stories and people really like that. And I suppose people just want to see everybody else in pain. <laughs> you yeah, people are monsters. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. What do you, okay. People, I, I feel like I don't ask this question very often, but I think a lot of people ask this in like the forums and stuff. What do you use to edit your videos? Uh, Premiere Pro. Okay. So you, you, you're like legit. You, you get into it. You do, you do the real editing. I go on an iMovie. <laughs> well, I love editing videos. And so, like, I, I full send it into Adobe. I, I've watched, you know, so many tutorials. It's, it's definitely, like, become one of my greatest passions mm. is editing videos. Thanks to Kendama. Do you, do you see yourself doing that as like a full-time thing? Is that something you'd like to do? Or do you just want to keep that as a passion or a hobby on the side? I think I just want to keep it as a passion. I, That's yeah. fair. Yep. But do, you, do you ever see yourself doing other types of video content in the future? So you're doing your edits, but do you see yourself doing more like YouTube style vlogs and stuff? Because A, I think you're like, you're like right there on the breach of like passing that barrier of going into like doing the YouTube longer form edits, capturing these moments. That's the stuff I'm like really desiring on YouTube right now. It's like, a, that's what I grew up on in my Kanama career. And I just want more of it. So I'm trying to push everybody that, that I think should do it to do it. So Chuck. All right. Uh, yes, it's definitely something that I would love to. It's something I'm in the future. It's okay. coming. I'll do long form YouTube. Right on, right on. Okay. Those of you guys out there, we just want more long form content on YouTube. Can we? Do you do you want like more vlog style? Hey, well like, that, I think that is the creator's choice of how they want to portray. I think, I, I love the, the videos that you do because you don't actually do much talking in them. It's just capturing moments visually and not necessarily through auditory. Uh, you're not having to explain things, you're just showing the moments. And, and it's like you're watching through like a flip book that's in video format of this day in your life or this jam that you went to or this edit you went and did. And it's like a video flip book of just moments. It's almost like you're like getting a, a do you, okay, I'm, my grandparents and my parents have these things all over their homes, right? They got these like, uh, I don't even know what the photo albums, that's what they're called. And they're like stacked. And that's what it feels like I'm flipping through when I'm watching through your videos. It looks like you're flipping through a photo album, just watching the different steps that you're taking in your life. The funny moments of like the kid hanging upside down from a tree, whatever it is, it's like you add those in and then there's the really special moments added in there where it's those more emotional. And it's like, wow, nobody else is doing that. Uh, 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so keep it up. Keep doing that. Long form content of that would be dope. Okay. Uh, and and I, I think people would love it. And I think it would uh it would hit hard on the YouTubes on the okay. algorithm. Um, but okay, let's let's hit up a, a couple more questions here, and then let's dive into the sweets Kanama story because I want to know that. Uh, we got a question here from Spectreken. Spectreken wants to know, do you have any favorite music production programs or video editing software that you enjoy using that aren't too expensive? So obviously Premiere Pro is, is not a cheap platform for most people to use. Do you use other, other programs? No. <laughs> Just get Premiere Pro, guys. Yeah, you got to get Premiere. <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's what I pretty much started off on. Did you use, what do you use for your audio for your production? Uh, Ableton, which is also a very expensive program. <laughs> so. Some, sometimes it's just worth getting the good stuff, guys. Don't cheap out on your Kanamas. Don't cheap out on your video editing software. It's the moral of the story. Or yep. just get iMovie. And then you can make bad edits like me. <laughs> <laughs> iMovie, I'm sure it's great. <laughs> also, have you ever used uh, DaVinci Resolve? So quick, quick little shout out. If you guys don't know about DaVinci Resolve, it's like, a really good editing platform that's just complicated to use. But if you can learn how to use it, it's really good and can do pretty much most things that Premiere Pro can do, but it's free. You just have to put in a lot more learning into using it. It's cool. like it's like Microsoft versus Apple, you know? So go, um, go give it a shot. Yeah, InShot as well is a good app for your phone for, for quick edits. There's tons of resources out there, but Premiere Pro is kind of the king, isn't it? It's all I know. Sometimes, so. you, sometimes you just got to go with the king or the queen, you know? Yeah. Got to yeah. own it. All right. Uh, let's hit two more questions, and then let's jump into the sweets stories. Gabe.Witherspoon, coming out with a hot question, wants to know, when are we starting Tuesday Jams again, Chuck? <laughs> let's go. Every, we're there every Tuesday. We'll just go, Gabe, and we'll, I'll show up. Yeah, just be there, Gabe. Gabe, be there. Every be, Tuesday. there. be there. <laughs> Tuesday Jams, what do you guys do? How do you, okay, you, do you run the Jams, first off? No. Who runs the Jams? Well, so Gabe, he, Gabe runs one of them, and that's the one I've been going to, <laughs> at Cheeseman, Cheeseman Park. There, okay. Yeah. And then, you, so you do two jams a week, or what? No, so I used to, uh, when I, so Kendama Collective is who, like, I kind of started with, mm -hmm. um, that they're, they, they did jams in boulder on fridays okay i was going to them and then gabe he's part of the lads and lads meet here in denver uh so it's like the the two different gangs in in colorado yeah, yeah. Do you guys have turf wars <laughs> the fir there it's like was sticker slaps on other people's territories one of the craziest moments of my life so we're we were jamming in cheeseman kendama collective and a group a gang of kendama players <laughs> started walking up to us and my mind was so blown swinging like, their kendamas around their yeah, heads it was a different group of kendama players and we had, we didn't know each other and then like soon enough we like came together kind of and yeah yeah that's that's, cr that's crazy yeah that's so funny i i just imagine if kendama ever gets big enough and, you know, like, there be, you know, I, I never hope that this happens, but there's a part of me that thinks it would make for a good movie. You know, Kenoma Turf Wars of, like, sticker slaps and, I don't know, like, challenging people to games of Ken for territory, you know, whatever it is. I think it could yes. make for a really indie, a terrible indie movie with bad C-list or D-list actors. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. So. Uh, you go to jams often. Uh, I think that's something that a lot of us are super jealous of. Not not every community has that privilege of going to jams all the time, and especially like up here in Canada. We try to run a jam like every other week. Uh, we're getting back into it now, but so many of us don't do that. What what does a jam look like for you? I think I, I don't actually ask this question very much, but what do you guys do at your jams? How do you make them so you know great? We play very loud music and dance around and mess with each other and play a few games of Ken, but like mostly just like jam out. Like everyone's playing Kendama, but Kendama's not necessarily like, it's the focus. It is the focus, mm -hmm. but like a lot of 
Kendama players, you know, are big EDM people, so they play a lot, so loud EDM, <laughs> and just dance around. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Uh, do you guys have any traditions that you do at your jams? Like anything that's like, this is how you close off your jam, or anything that you do to start it, or whatever? No. No, nothing so, like that. We, we, and, I mean, maybe that's a, is that like culty to think about that? Like, yeah, we at the end of each of our jams, we all we all uh, pass a ball across all of our big cups to one another, and then we we say a little chant, and then we all disperse in different directions. I want to see I want to see someone do that, but uh, we are at our jams here. We we usually go to this like uh, street Indian restaurant. They got a patio in the back, and we we like always we try to go there fairly often because then we just jam in their back patio while eating you know East Indian food. It's so good. Fun. Yeah, I know. So if anybody wants to come to Calgary and jam with us, that's what you can expect to end our jams. It's, it's not that creepy. <laughs> cool. So okay, let, let let's dive into the story here of of how you got onto the Sweet Skinamas team and and what your your role with maybe Sunday and and that journey has looked like. Kind of catching us up to today and where you're at. So yeah, yeah from from where you were, catch us up to the Sweet Skinamas story. Um. Okay. So, um. I, so, okay, to get to the sweet story, it has to be the maybe Sunday story first, okay. kind of. So, uh, I wanted to be on the maybe Sunday team so bad, but Chase was like, you got to get good. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you no free just, passes. Yeah. And so, for months and months and months, he was sending me trick lists and, be, and was like, complete this trick list, like, show me you can do it and then you know I'll give you another one and he was like boot camp boot camp boot camp and it was like he was you know like all right we'll announce you soon and in that time sweets came to me which I'll, I'll tell that story in a second <laughs> um but and so when I got that message I called Chase and was like holy crap like sweet just asked to sponsor me and Chase was like, like, if you don't, if we don't get you announced on the maybe Sunday first, like, oh, you, you know, you got to be announced to maybe Sunday first. Like, I have been training you, you know, like, I created <laughs> you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I went to Sweets and was like, hey, like, thank you so much, you know, obviously all that stuff. But I was like, I need to be announced on the maybe Sunday first. And they're they're fun with that. So. They're fun with that. So then you got yeah. announced on maybe Sunday. What? Yeah. Okay. So what what is that like for you? I, I mean, we've heard Carter Justice's story a bit, right? Carter Carter's good friends with Chase. He loves it. We all love maybe Sunday out here. Great brand. Love the designs. Um, but for you, like you're you're Chase's sister. Uh, what is what is that like? Is there a different dynamic there for you? And also, just chat us through what your relationship with your brother is like, because it seems like you guys are super close. Yeah. Well, first off, it was super hard to get on the team. It took <laughs> so long. So many trick lists. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. Um, that but, Chase, yeah, he's up. <laughs> yeah, geez. Uh, yeah, no, Chase, me and Chase are super close. Like, we talk all day, every day. We support each other in everything that we've ever done. Like, we're very close. He inspires me, you know, I inspire him. And like maybe Sunday he was like, I think we both just kind of immediately knew that like, I, I was kind of going to be more the face. Cause you know, he doesn't show his face really. And right. uh, I started taking pictures for the clothes and like, yeah, I, I was, a, I'm a huge, maybe Sunday fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love the I love the stuff. There, there's some sick designs. I would cop, man. I, I sometimes I hate living in Canada and being a part of a mostly American community because, hey, first off, Canadian shipping anything is expensive. It's like minimum, like we pay like fifteen to twenty bucks for shipping anywhere. It's like, it's so hard to like pay that and buy clothes. It's like yeah. I could just go to H and M or something local and get a shirt. Right. But I, I want this. So I'm I'm waiting for the next in person event. And I'm hoping that Chase brings a booth so I can scoop some maybe Sunday clothing. So yeah. guys, go go cop some maybe Sunday clothing. Go yeah. support go support small businesses. Go support yeah. small kendama businesses. Yeah. And yeah, just enjoy. Enjoy it. 
<laughs> okay, so you, you were added onto the Maybe Sunday team. Were you yes. the, one of the first people or were there other people yeah. on the team when you joined? I was the last. I was the oh. last person. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Chase. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, Joe Nelson just got added to the team, so I'm not right. like the last, but no, there was everyone, there was like, five people on the team I think and then I finally got an ad very cool so who all is on the maybe Sunday team I'm trying to remember is it it's Gucci Moon Boots yep it's Carter Justice yep Joe Nelson yep you yep who's the fifth who am I forgetting okay I'm so scared that I'm also forgetting one but I think that's everybody but if I'm forgetting someone I'm so sorry I think that's all of them though Okay, am I am I not missing someone in there? I just no, counted four. I think it's four. I think I just threw out that five number. Okay. I think it's four. Yeah, well, Chase is the fifth, right? That counts. Sure. Yeah. 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 He designs it. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. So maybe Sunday, talk, maybe give us a, a brief snapshot because it's been a long time since we've talked about maybe Sunday on the show. Carter Justice is one of the first episodes where we talked a little bit about it. Um, what is maybe Sunday doing right now? What should we get excited about in regards to maybe Sunday? And are they looking to add more people to their team? Um, so Chase owns a screen printing studio. So he's down there grinding, grinding, grinding. Um, so there'll be a drop soon. I Probably not super soon, like, <laughs> but it, it'll come out. Pretty, pretty soon. Some cool stuff is, is on the way. Yeah. Do you have a favorite piece of clothing from maybe Sunday? Like what's your favorite design? Um, the one, the one with, with like the spiky ball. Okay. There's a spiky ball connected to the kendama. I wear that t-shirt every okay. day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember that one. I have to go back on the Maybe Sunday website and see what they, they got up there in, in their archives. So I might, I'm, maybe after the show, I'll have to go put in an order here soon. Well, yeah. we'll see what we can come up with. Cool. Okay. So you, you were added to maybe Sunday. And then after that, you were, you already told sweet. So you were actually offered the sweet sponsorship first, but you said, Hey, let's just wait. I want to be added to the maybe Sunday team first. And then you were added to the sweets team. What was that process like? And what did that, what was that feeling like when you got that message from sweets Kanamas? That moment, I, I, I remember like it was yesterday, I was laying out in the park listening to music and I like saw the message and I just started pacing around the park I was like no way there's no <laughs> like they sent it to the wrong person there's like... a fake sweets at Kanama's account this isn't the real yeah. one you're gonna <laughs> ask then... for my social insurance <laughs> and I ran up to my apartment to tell my roommate but he doesn't know what Kendama is really I was like yo sweet just asked me to be on the team and he was like what what sweet so i was like ah i need someone to be happy for me <laughs> oh what a supportive roommate <laughs> <laughs> he was like cool it's like no this is a big deal <laughs> it is a big deal the biggest brand in kendama by far yeah. has has invited you to be a part of their team you've been playing for what two years ish around that around that ballpark and you were yeah. invited to be on the Swiss team. Was that overwhelming to you? Was that, like, what were some of the emotions that you were going through in that moment? I was super stoked. I couldn't believe it. I was excited for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Was it a pretty quick yes? Like, you, were you hoping for that? Were, were you grinding for that? Or did it come very unexpectedly to you? It was so unexpected. I was not grinding for that at all. Um... What was the first question? Was that yeah? What I was I'm mostly just asking, like, was it expected or unexpected? And... Oh yeah, yeah. No, super not expected. Cool, so cool. So, what what did the journey look like between that invite to the announcement and the creation of your edit? Which, a first off, your edit was stunning. the The amount of like color that was involved, it was a it was a vibe, like it was a bob. So good. Uh, I've watched that edit back and forth probably probably like a half a dozen times in the past little bit. And it's so cool. And a, I'm trying to remember the song choice, but that song is on hip my, hop. like, yeah, hip hop. Hip my, hop. Yeah. yeah. I have that song on my liked playlist. And every time it comes up on my, like, when I'm just, like, driving, it, like, comes up fairly often. I'm like, this is the, this is the Chuck Edit song. Oh, that's like, an honor. <laughs> so, 
So it's a good, it's a good bop. And whenever I play it, I'm like, ah, I got to play Kendama now. I have like a Kendama, pl- I, no, uh, well, that's a lie. I don't have a Kendama playlist, but I have a playlist that has a bunch of songs that are from edits that I really enjoy that those songs get me into like flow states of playing Kendama yeah. because I remember the song being tied to a uh, Kendama edit. And then it like creates this like correlation in my head that then gets me into a play cycle. Uh, for example, like um, uh, September by Earth, Wind and Fire, but not the original one, the remix, because that was used in D Westy's Downtown Days edit or with uh, TJ Kolsnick, I think. And that edit was one of my favorite edits starting out. And so anytime I hear that song, I'm like, all right, I got to pick up a Kendama and try rad D Westy tricks. Or there's, <laughs> yeah. there's an, whatever the edit is in Max Norcross's uh, pro announcement edit, like his original one when he launched the this this mod war or this tama i can't remember what the edit was called but it's pro pro edit and whatever the song was called in that 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 song also gets me in like a, a deep flow state of playing kendama you gotta have gotta have a kendama playlist mm. Tony, do you have one? of course it's you- called raw is kendama on spotify okay it's- the greatest to, playlist drop the follows go subscribe to that playlist i'm gonna yes. subscribe to that because i'm always looking for good music to jam to or is any of your self-produced music in it no come on no, why not no 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 you are you are you ever gonna put your lo-fi music on spotify no <laughs> no why not i'm not, I'm not i very much it's one of those things that i just want to keep a passion and not i want small i don't want a lot of people to hear you know? okay okay like, that's fair what i you could send me the link all this i i need more yes. lo-fi i won't publicly share it I'll, okay there it'll we just go. be for my work day <laughs> okay <laughs> unless it accidentally gets leaked because people need to hear it i mean <laughs> just kidding yeah <laughs> it, it's your choice okay here here's what i want to know though you filmed a really dope at it it was really sick. What was that process like? Who did you have someone fly oh. out to film that with you? Um, okay, so I didn't know I didn't know like how long it was going to be until I was announced, which ended up being a, a a while, like a solid month. It felt like forever though, you know. Mm-hmm. So I went on Facebook to like I found like a video Denver video group and just put out like hey, like there's a toy called Kendama. Can someone come film me for a day? And like the first message I got, they hit me up. They were like, hey, we can do this. And they ended up just being amazing. Like I only filmed for, you know, a couple hours for that edit. (laughs) And like I told them, like, I was like, we don't have time to for me to like grind out some tricks what I want to portray is like my style and like I I I wanted to be more cinematic and yeah I didn't focus on tricks at all for that edit yeah but I loved the way it came out yeah so did these guys just volunteer to do it or did you end up paying them to do it I paid them now how much if you don't mind me asking like how much did it cost to produce that edit it was just it was super cheap for like how good the quality Yeah, it was. turned out amazing. It was so I edited it myself. They just took raw footage. It was like a hundred and fifty bucks for like three hours or something. Yeah, that's not bad at all. N- not bad. And you got dope shots out of it. So I okay, so I was under the impression that someone at Sweets had edited it, but you actually did the editing. I edited it. So George helped me with a couple things, but like I definitely did the majority I edited it. That's so cool. That's awesome. Well, uh, how much would you charge for, you know, people in the Kanama community to send them to send you their raw footage and edit for them? Okay. Do you, would you, that's, would you take that proposition from someone? That's like my dream. Okay. <laughs> I know, like, I don't know if people would want that. So. Oh no, I, people would want that. I would love to edit people's footage. It's my favorite thing to do. I have no idea how much I would like pay. Like mm. that's like a passion project, you know. I'd probably do it right. for free. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, you have to give yourself value. Definitely, right. definitely, right. definitely do it. Yeah, Ed did it. Edited yeah, D Pat's calling out my stutters there. <laughs> it's so hard to say edited it. It's like, how do you even say it? Anyways, um, so okay. Honestly, though, I think more people in Kanama should be doing that because there's. There's a, enough like amazing editors, Jacob D. Watts in the chat, you, George, Coop, all these people that like, they could totally create their own little side hustle by just saying like, hey, 
I will edit your footage for you into a one minute clip or, or whatever it is. You just send me the footage, tell me kind of what you want for the vibes and, and it'll be, you know, X amount of dollars. And you know, you, it's like doing Fiverr, right? It's like, but yeah. you slowly build up that rapport. People then slowly reach out to you. There's amazing editors. There's a Kanama Mamba. He's Sweets Kanama's Canada. He is so good at editing. I love his clips and he does amazing reels and highly high quality. And it's like, I want to send clips to people to edit because I hate editing. Okay. So much. Send me your clips. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't have them. clips. Oh. No <laughs> <relates>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but but if I do, send then maybe. Them to me. My, my problem here. Here's my problem, and I think this is the problem of a lot of people in Kanama. Is so many of us are so instant gratification focused. Like I got this like monkey in my head that anytime I lay something, I'm like instantly clip it down to size. Let's get this up on the gram fast because yeah. people need to see what I just did. Because I always feel like guilty if I hold something and post it later because it's like. People see me on live and I'm like, my hair's longer, but in that clip, it's shorter. So obviously this was a stacked clip from behind. And I'm like, I don't know if I have this weird like paradox in my head that I can't do that. And so I just post stuff like immediately. I'm, I'm, I'm real bad for that. It's hard to not do that. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. Super hard. Yeah. How long, how long does it take you to edit uh, your, your videos that you do? So I'm kind of the same way. Like I can't sit on footage. So usually like an all nighter. <laughs> oh so you'll like film during the day and you'll just stay up and edit yep and okay. so it's done like till the sun comes up and then then i'll post it in the morning crazy crazy so what was your favorite part of filming that edit for you uh you know there was a lot of moments in that i thought the smoke was so cool but what what was your favorite part of doing the edit um my favorite part of doing the edit was probably getting just so lucky with the guys that i worked with like they they were they just were awesome but yeah that's probably my best part we we listened to, i put on loud music and like danced around like we took a lot of like dancing footage yeah yeah, yeah did you do any what was that dance with the fuete yes. did you I do a fuete i was definitely doing some fuetes <laughs> some fuetes i gotta work on those after uh yeah, that's so cool. And so that whole process, what was that filming process like? And how long did it take you to edit that that video? So that one, I edited it <laughs> pretty quickly. But then th the announcement didn't come out for like another month. And mm -hmm. so I kept going back to it and yeah. changing little things and little things. Yeah. So, Okay, super cool. So guys, it doesn't take that long to edit your stuff. I'm, I'm preaching to me right now. At, you know, <laughs> Cafe, Adam, it doesn't take that long. Just go do it. Yeah, just do it. Just or do send it. it to me. Or, se or send, it to, send it to Chuck. And yeah. Chuck, Chuck may ask you for funds. She may do it for free, but you should tip her and pay her because you should never devalue someone's work by not offering them value in return. So give them yes. something. Yes. Value people's work. If we want to see Kendama grow, we need to pour value in. You know, that's it. We're, we're building this whole thing together. All right. Uh, let's, let's talk post-sponsorship, uh, post-edit. You've now been on the Sweets team for a while. What has that journey been like? What have been the, the highs? What have, been, what have been the changes? What has changed for you since being sponsored? I have a lot more content I get to create because I constantly am receiving a new Kendama it gives me an opportunity to mm. create to create a video so that's fun um what else has changed not a lot not a lot changed <laughs> but hey that's fair that's totally fair <laughs> i'm still jamming kendama i now have a beautiful community that i look to and that supports me and i support mm -hmm. you know bigger community but yeah, so the Sweets team has obviously grown quite a lot in the past couple of years with the addition of like the sub geographic teams like Sweets Canada, Sweets Romania, Sweets Korea, you name it, all over the all over the world. There's just like so many Sweets branches. And then there's like the Sweets team. It, it gets a, a little bit like overwhelming for me to think about the web of how everything is connected. Is are you part of a pocket or do, how does that work? Like what is your involvement with the broader Sweets industry? Uh, look like how do you fit in so we have sweets american the american team mm -hmm. well i don't think we're i think there's people living in other but like the sweet team that we kind of know 
Right. We so we have team meetings once every couple months. Other than that, I don't really know about Sweets Canada or the sure. other Sweets France. I don't really know. But yeah, are you? Uh, are, oh, sorry. Go ahead. But like our Sweets team, we're like we're pretty close. Like there's a constant chat, you know, going on. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna try and sneak into that chat one day. <laughs> <Just, laughs> um, so who are, who are you closest with on the team? On the Swedes team. So, the so George Marshall used to live in Boulder, and mm-hmm. I would see he at him at the Kendama Jams. So, probably who I'm closest with, or probably Sweets. George. I feel closest to Matt Sweets. Like I watch him on Twitch streams three times a week. You know, I feel yeah. super close to Matt Sweets. <laughs> What what do you do for work that you're able? I, I every now and then I like I try and tune in while I'm doing some work. I got my other monitor and I'll have it streaming there. I just like I join in and type exclamation whatever the giveaway is and I just hope yeah. to win something. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what what do you do? Are you are you working right now? Yeah. So right now I'm kind of in between things, which is super nice. I'm mm-hmm. loving life right now. I'm working on a couple passion projects. Nice. And yeah, just a bit unemployed right now <laughs> hey that is that is the world that we live in right now and unemployment yeah. rates are high it's normal that's fine yeah. and you get that beautiful opportunity right now to spend the time doing some of those things that you probably wouldn't have the opportunity to spend the time to do if you were working full-time doing something yep. so now you get some fun stuff so what are some projects you're working on that you want to get us excited about what are what are some things that you can you can tell us about that we should get excited for so i have something big i have something right. big that i haven't announced but I'd love to announce it here. Okay. Let's do it. I, I'm so excited about it. Okay, so I got a thing. It's called What the Chuck Woodworks. And I'm building some things. The first thing that's coming out is a 24 rack kendama shelf. Okay. It's it's gonna it's like this big. <laughs> yeah yeah oh uh, this is a podcast people can't see what yeah, i'm doing well, well they can tune in on the igtv but for okay. comparison like though the width of like 30. i don't know like an adult male beaver or like <laughs> I just, I don't know, <laughs> but whatever the length of fitting 24 kendamas wide is and i've been working very hard on this kendama shelf and i call my dad like five times a day because I almost cut off my finger with the table saw. Like, yeah, that's really like, bad for Kendama. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I've been grinding really hard on what the Chuck wood works. I think that's going to be the name. That's so cool. Is your tagline like, how much wood can a woodchuck chuck or something like that? <laughs> yeah, something like that. I definitely thought about trying to use that as a title. I was like, that seems way too cheesy, yeah. way too <laughs> I, elementary. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, did you did you do lots of woodworking beforehand? I think I remember seeing some videos. You were in like a construction uniform. I, I don't know if you were working in construction or what that looked like, but. So I just graduated from like a construction school. So now I'm like, since I can't find a construction job right now, really, um, I'm just doing it in my garage. So cool. yeah, Constru- I like, I really like building things. Cool. And I love that I can, again, combine a couple of my passions, kendama and carpentry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you have, like, an incredible set of skills. Like, you, from DJing to kendama to editing to construction, like, I think most of us in life are pretty happy if we can develop one skill. Uh, <laughs> and, and usually it's not even that good. Uh, but you, you've actually, like, progressed in these different capacities of your life, and you're trying to find ways to bridge them all together. You know, you, and they've, they've almost, like, translated into one another from, from music and dance into kendama into DJing into all these different things. Do you ever feel like you're leaving one behind, or have you found a way to just bring them all together? I, I love just feeling what I'm pulled to at the moment. Mm. And I don't really, once in a while, I'll, I'll be like, no, I don't even, no, I don't. I feel like I tend to all my passions equally. Yeah. Mm. If there was one new, if there was a new skill that you could pick up uh, today and start working on, what new skill would that be? Parkour. Ooh. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to connect you with our, our friend of the, the show, Ben Conte out in uh, France. 
Okay. Have you have you seen his his recent edit with Kenoma France? Uh, no. He did. It's uh, a long long video called "Stay on Stay on Your Tablet," and it's like a Kenoma France edit. But there's some scenes. Ben Conte is like a professional parkour free runner, and he plays Kenoma, and he does like edits where he's like on rooftops doing Kenoma and stuff. It's so cool. Cool. Yeah. I w I wish I could do parkour too. Yeah. I think everybody, like deep down in their heart, sees those guys doing those stuff, or you know, flipping over things. There, there's just an incredible amount of skill and technique that goes into that, that I think we all admire, no yeah. matter who we are. Yeah. And it's crazy. We may think they're irresponsible, but we all want to be them. Yeah, the strength, <laughs> it, the creativity. It's a beautiful thing that, yeah, I got, I got to check that guy out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, you do. He's, he's a wonderful guy, loves the game of Konama too, uh, worth, worth becoming friends with. He's he's given me the open invitation to come come to France and hang out on his couch and he'll teach me he'll teach me how to run on rooftops. So Got I'm it. hoping hoping Got one day I can plug. I can take him up on that. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the hope. Did are you uh, on the parkour note? I this isn't the question I've I've ever asked before, I don't think on the show, but are you a fan of the office? Uh-huh. Of course. Yeah, oh yeah. Parkour, parkour. episode. Yeah, uh, pretty good one. Pretty good cold open. I spent some morning, some of my morning watching some uh, Office Clips. Big fan. Uh, I only got into it a couple of years back, but become a big fan recently. Uh huh. Right on. Hey, well, uh, Chuck, we got a couple minutes left here. Why don't we take some time, answer some of these questions, and then we'll we'll wrap up today's episode. Let me say first off, before we jump into these questions, a huge thank you for taking the time to jump on here to tell some of your story, to to walk us through your involvement in the community and how you've really just stepped out of your shell. You've come from this world where you were setting the stage for other people, right? You were DJing, you were creating a space for other people to perform. You were a performer, you danced, and, and you found that as a physical expression of, of sorts. And now you've entered into this new world where you've entered into a community yourself. You're no longer creating the space for other people to gather, you're actually participating in the gathering yourself. And you're now invested in it, you're a part of this world. You're a part of the community. You're doing stuff for the community. You're being noticed and you're creating these incredible videos. And since your sponsorship, you've not stopped. You've continued to invest. And I think that's admirable. I think that more people need to be doing that. I think that you've captured a heart of Kendama that doesn't often get captured in the way that I, I wish it did. And so let me say a big thank you to the work that you've done for Kendama. Uh, we always like to take the, the opportunity to just say a big thank you at the end of each of our episodes for our guests. So thank you. Um thank you thank you for those kind words thank you for what you've done i i'm a huge podcast listener so i love again podcast kendama like two of my favorite things thank you that's what we're out here doing <laughs> do you so i i usually try not to ask this because i don't want to put the pressure on anyone do you, do you listen to the show much yeah of course do, do you have a favorite episode that you've listened to which um, one Steezy, Steezy Wonder, that I resonated with all the words he said. Also, the Brian Skaggs, I love that. <laughs> those two. Those, those are good ones. The Brian Skaggs line interview, uh, for those that don't know, is actually the number one most listened to episode on the, on the, on the podcast so far. Uh, for now, you know, we got, the, we got the Chuck episode that's about to go live after this. So <laughs> watch out, Skaggs. Chuck's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, let's hit up a couple questions here and then we'll, we'll wrap things up uh, again. Thank you so much for being on here and thank you for your kind words. I'm so grateful for anyone that takes the time out of their day to listen to the show. So thank you. No, thank you. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. We got a couple good ones here. Uh, Neck and Giraffe wants to know what's your favorite music genre at the moment? Hip hop. I'm a big hip hop head. East Coast, specifically New York hip hop. West Side Gun. Benny the Butcher and Conway the Machine. Okay, right. I don't think I've ever heard of any of those people. I'm, I'm not a huge music head, which disappoints people. I, I like don't know much about music. I like listening to it, then, but I always rely on other people's recommendations. I'm not an explorer. That is fine. Oh, I feel like I may have just messed up. That's all good. You're good. I'm good. Oh yeah, we're good. All right, uh, Takana.Kandama underscore EC wants to know, uh, what would you say to girls so that they are motivated to play Kandama in Latin America? Um, 
Um, this is a tough it, question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't know what the kendama scene in Latin America looks like, but just keep playing. Keep, keep posting content. If there's kendama jams, go. If not, try to make a kendama jam happen. Hmm. You, uh, if I recall, you were pretty nervous about going to your first jam, right? Yes. Yes, because I didn't hang out with another human being for like two years. <laughs> Crazy. My, yeah. What? Yeah. Did did you have like a lead up to that? Like, were you chatting with them? Did they know you were showing up? Did you know any of the people there? Or did you just like find out about this jam and just go like, roll up and people are like, yo, oh, who are you? Yeah, it happened so quickly. I got the message and like an hour later, I was on my way there. And like, I almost didn't go, you know, I, it's not something I would usually do. But I can't, you know, I can't imagine what, what my life would be like if I didn't go. Yeah. Crazy. And Zero and, and all for the better now. Yeah, the, the life has changed. No yeah. regrets. No regrets. Right on. Okay, let's hit a couple more here. Uh, RKT.doma wants to know, what are some tricks that still give you trouble now? All of them. <laughs> All tricks are hard. Juggles. I grind juggles so hard and still struggle so hard. Yeah. Mm. They're not easy. Some people make it way too easy and it's frustrating because they undermine how hard it actually is. <laughs> All right, we got a question here from Jacob yeah. D. Watts. Uh, he wants to know, what is your favorite brand besides sweets? This is always a, a hard question for sponsored players to answer, but, but is, it can be done. Do you have a favorite shape outside of sweets that you like to play? Um, it's, I, like, I played analog for sure before sweets. The, the lavender berry can life. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely analog. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I love, the analog shape is great. Great, yeah. their new shape, uh, the Squab 2020 is super cool. And they're, they're working on some formulation. Uh, we talked about it with the Jacob Watts episode. Uh, they're working on a new type of paint coating called Brick Clear. And so I, I got a, a sample of it. And so I've been playing around with that a little bit. It's pretty cool, I like it. It's pretty hype. That's uh, all right, uh, we got a question here. This is not a question. Uh, but we'll, we'll say it anyways here from Dama. Hey, Chuck, not a question. I just think you're beautiful and you seem like an amazing person. Oh, we always like you. encouragement. Thank you, Calo, for the kind words. Yeah. Um, Ron underscore Ken underscore Tama. Oh, this is an interesting question. We didn't talk about this aspect of your life. How did you get into truck driving? Both Kendama and truck driving are very inspiring, inspiring to watch from a woman as a woman. Uh, Ron, great question. Uh, how did you get into, you truck drove? Yes. I love driving trucks. <laughs> it was pretty much uh, the first job I applied to here in Denver and I got it and I did it for three years and I loved every second of truck driving. That's awesome. Uh, what, do you, did you have a brand of truck that you drove? Penske. Bensky. I, I just remember uh, Pen Penske. Pen My, I grew up in a, like a farming kid family, or not, not me in particular. We were like the city family of my, my mom's side. Uh, but on my mom's side, they're all farmers and they all got trucks uh, and stuff. And there's my one uncle and my one other uncle. And they always, they always have arguments whether or not, you know, Kenworth or Peterbilt or whatever, you know, whatever all the different brands are. And they, they go, they have long conversations over all that stuff. I don't know yeah. anything. I just know, I just remember the name Peterbilt, but I'm not a, I'm not a truck guy. Not, yeah, not so much. I, I, I like cars that go fast. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Optimus Prime truck, pretty cool. Did, sure. So good, truck driving though, uh, did you did you play Kendama while you were driving trucks? So, yes, I would do slingers nonstop as I was driving, <laughs> and then oh, I... just like on the side. <laughs> yes, um, yes. That's super cool. 
That is that is awesome. Every now and then I do earth turns while I'm driving. It's a really terrible habit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> trying to work on being better at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, Chuck, I think that's pretty much it for all the questions. Let me say this last one here from Gabe Witherspoon. Uh, as a nice reminder to everybody, guys, lace all day. All day. Don't stop lacing. Don't stop playing kendama. Is that is that a slogan that comes from your guys' jams? Yeah, L lace all day. That's that stands for lads. Well, lads stands for lace all day. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so that's where that comes lads. from. Yeah. Well, Gabe, thanks for leaving us with an incredible last note on on reminding us to lace all day. And let me say, guys, there's days where we go through slumps. There's days where we just have a hard time. But never forget the people, right? It's the people that keep us involved, even if you're not having the best kanama day. Don't let that beat you up. You're still spending time with people. You're still growing as a human. You're progressing and you probably are still getting better even if it feels like it's not a great day. Just keep yeah. focusing on that subtle progression and involve yourself. Take some notes from Chuck's life. It's a pretty cool life to watch. So Chuck, thank you uh, so much. I always like to leave the space here at the end for, for you to say some final words and then I'll shout out who our next uh, guest is for, for next week. But cool. give us some, some leaving wisdom from right. Chuck. Stay creative. Uh, don't be afraid to, to step out of the box. Like, don't be afraid to post what you're passionate about. If it's different or like, you know, just if you feel inspired to post something, whether it's like a certain song that you're timid about, like, don't be afraid. We'll support you, you know? So stay creative. Yeah, don't push yourself too hard. You know, feel feel pulled to do kendama. Don't don't like force yourself to do it. Sometimes you know. And then lastly, uh, what the Chuck Wood Woodworks coming soon. What the Chuck Woodworks? Get on it, guys! Go yeah. get those new shelves when they come out. Make sure yes. you're following Chuck at Carly underscore Carlson on Instagram. Go show her some love. Go find maybe Sunday. Go find Chase. Go show him some love. We showed it at a lot of people in here. Go show the love to those people. I'll try and link a few of them in the show notes afterwards so you guys can get those links. Uh, make sure you go cop some of those new kendamas that came out. Do you have a favorite kendama on the Sweets website that you'd like to shout out? Um, yeah, the Splice. The Splice that just came out, amazing. Go get the, go get the Splice. They're super cool. Yes. There you go, guys. That's it. And thank you so much, Chuck, for jumping on here. Next week, we got a pretty fun interview with the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin DeSoto, Ken Castle, yeah. Kevin DeSoto from Soul Kendamas, one of the OG Soul Pros, longest standing member on the team, I believe. And we got a, a pretty fun conversation coming up with KD. Uh, KD has been around in the community for a long time. He is known as a collective hype beast. Uh, if you've ever met KD in person at an event, uh, it is it is worth getting to be this guy's friend because he is just a genuine loving human being uh, and we are so excited to bring him on next week so uh, be, stay tuned and uh, it'll be a good one i promise uh chuck thank you for for jumping on here and we will see everybody next week on the review yeah thank you so much for having me absolutely so fun. dude my pleasure Amazing. all right chuck, take care and we will see you guys again